Hey, what's happening everybody? Charles Maring here and today I am geared up, bags are packed and I am getting ready to head out the door to a destination celebrity wedding that I will be photographing and filming alongside my wife and I thought, you know what? Let's take a moment and share all the gear that we pack, how we pack it and also a little bit about the mental process and what we go through to get to this point to be prepared for a wedding on this level. So first, let's cut to our intro. <laughs> Now, whatever you're filming or creating with is irrelevant. Uh, you know, you hand somebody with experience a Holga from the old days and they're going to go out and create amazing photographs. So it doesn't matter what I shoot with. but. You know, technology can make a difference for us in some of the ways that we capture things, make our lives uh, easier, make certain parts of create, capturing things more enjoyable. And so we'll talk about some of the cameras I use and go through some of the gear, some of the lighting, some of the tripods, uh, and all the little details leading up to it. So uh, bags are packed, but uh, we'll start here. I have a Lumix GH5. This will be uh, one of my go-to cameras uh, on the wedding day. I have a uh, dual mic interface on top of the GH5. This is a really cool thing because it's going to allow me to capture dual audio, something from an on-camera uh, mic like you see here, like a shotgun mic, and then secondarily I can run a lapel mic or a wireless lav to another thing and have dual audio coming in that I can mix at a later date. So I love this little audio unit for that purpose. Runs right through the hot shoe. Uh, I've got an 8 to 18 millimeter on this camera right now. But truth be told, the GH5 is probably going to live on my gimbal for the most part because it doesn't have five axis stabilization built in, but it is incredible in low light. So from a low light perspective, this will be my go-to camera for a lot of different things on the wedding day, uh, from filmmaking to photography. Um, so really one of my favorite systems in here. Um, so all the batteries are charged and one of the things that I do uh, that's just a simple thing to make sure I know what's charged and what's not when I'm looking through the camera bag trying to find something uh, that's charged is I'll wrap a, batter, a rubber band around anything that is charged just like you see here. And then when I pull the rubber band I know that anything in the camera bag that doesn't have a rubber band on it is not charged because a lot of times at weddings you know, we're on the move, we have to think fast, and sometimes we have to reach in and grab a, a battery and be on the go. This just lets me know with ease, it's either charged or it's not. Simple little process here, something I go through. Uh, let me move some of this out of the way and we'll pull up some more bags and just start going through the gear bag. So, one of the things uh, that I carry to weddings for photography, I packed all this for my wife, is that I do carry lighting to my weddings. Uh, we'll go into the lighting, but part of it is having uh, stands for our lights and I love these stands because they they go up incredibly high but they're incredibly lightweight as well uh, and so basically when I'm looking for stands I'm looking for a stand that will allow me to have three tiers uh, see if I can get a close-up here of levels as you see here uh, one two three and so having three tiers allows me to get the light above everyone's heads if they're dancing on the dance floor and so uh, you know, we'll bring it up and we'll get it up really high sometimes. Uh, and so that's key to us being able to light ballrooms and things of, lot of that nature. Also, so I have two of these in my bag. I also have a white translucent umbrella. Uh, another key thing, the, this is really my favorite light shaping tool at weddings. It's, it's the simplest thing. This is the small version. Uh, quite honestly, I like the medium size. So I'll be picking up the medium size, dropping it in the bag before I leave. But I'm going to show you through some photographs why the translucent umbrella is one of my favorites uh, because it really allows me to do a lot and yet it packs up so easily and fits in the bag. So generally I'll have one little light stand bag like this uh, that goes everywhere with me uh, as well. So on the tripod front I have uh, a series, I'll have three of these. These are enduro tripods. Uh, they have a ball head that allow me to adjust really simply here. Uh, any angle that I want. Uh, but these get up high enough, they're carbon fiber and I love the carbon fiber tripods because they're just so lightweight, so nimble and I can really take them anywhere with ease. 
So that's kind of the, the stands that I end up using when I go to weddings. Uh, let's bring out, before we go through some imagery, um, maybe some lighting here. So this is my lighting bag. Um, this is a Profoto backpack and inside of the Profoto backpack, and I'll share photographs to share why this is what I use. Uh, we have two light heads, identical. These are Profoto B1 units, uh, which I'll roll out with. They work on battery power, as you see here. They have a really nice um, LED uh, modeling lamp, which I can use in video as well, uh, if I wish to. But these will literally last an entire wedding, front to back, even for a long day, for all that I do at weddings. Uh, just one battery. So I really don't have to charge them. Um, of course, the wedding that I'm going on is quite interesting because it um, is a destination wedding. So I will bring a charger because we're having lots of events throughout the week that I'll be photographing and filming. Also have my Profoto Air Remote. I work with Lumix cameras mostly. So this is uh, just your basic uh, Air Remote. I manually adjust everything because it will not TTL with the Lumix system. But you know, I grew up doing everything manual. I don't like TTL personally. Um, I prefer to work manual because I know exactly what the result's going to be. And no matter what's on the dance floor, what I have found with TTL is DJ lighting and all the different lights that at some of my weddings uh, can fool the TTL and my exposures end up all over the place. So just better to manually expose and know what the aperture or yeah, what your aperture is going to be uh, than to go through any kind of TTL thing anyway. Even if I could do TTL, I wouldn't. So. That's kind of uh, my lighting bag and my stands. Uh, let's bring up the main bag that I carry everything uh, to a destination wedding in, and that is this beast here, which is a Tamarack bag. I don't remember the model number, but it's a really cool bag because it helps me to organize everything pretty easily. Let's go through what's in here, and there's a lot. Um, I have a DJI Mavic Pro drone here. Uh, this is gonna be uh, mostly for vlogging because I'm gonna be uh, kind of capturing behind the scenes of our vlog. I don't need to pull it out, but I got a couple extra batteries here and we will be capturing some drone shots for the vlog. We'll be vlogging the whole time, so I figured let's bring this along. I also have a GoPro Session 5. Uh, I love this because there's lots of little angles that I'll capture along the way. I love that I can just drop this anywhere uh, and capture some really meaningful details along the way at a wedding and uh, things you, the angles you don't expect to see. Um, have a little tripod here for it too, which is great. Uh, I have a flash here for my, you know, on-camera flash for the Lumix GH5 as well, uh, which we may use, we may not, depends on what we run into during the wedding day. Uh, let's go through the lens, lenses here. Um, seven to 14 millimeter F4. I have the 100 to 300. I have a uh, 40 to 150 2.8, uh, which is a Zuiko lens. And I'll show you photographs with all of these and why I carry all this. This I'm not taking, but um, I have a Lumix GX85 in the bag. I actually have two of these that I take with me. I love these because they're just so tiny. And for filmmaking, I can grab a second or third angle. Uh, I can put it on one of those little tripods that the GoPro was on if I want and capture another unique angle. Just kind of run and gun. Uh, I have a GX8 here. Uh, we expected our G9 to come in, and unfortunately, it is not. Uh, so kind of disappointing there. So Jennifer's going to bounce between the GX8, uh, which is an incredible camera. Um, uh, I'll share photographs of all kinds on, on both of these momentarily. So a lot of times you think, oh, do I need a G, GH5, GH5S, G, G9 to do these things? I'm going to show you so many beautiful photographs off of these little cameras that these are really key because I love, yes, do I want a GH5 or a G9 on, my, uh, on, on me at all times? Absolutely. But a lot of times I'll keep just a small lens on one of these and it'll, it's just a format, folks, so I'll just pull that from my hip and be, have, have all sorts of angles at my fingertips that way. So I love little cameras for that reason, is it just gives us a lot of opportunities to share all sorts of things. We have uh, the Leica 12-60. to This is one of my favorite go-to lenses for the filmmaking side of things um, because it does have an incredibly smooth zoom. I actually use the zoom on this. 
uh, alongside my GH, GH5. I have a 12 to 35 2.8. I have two of these, uh, which is a 35 to 100 2.8 as well. So that is kind of the rundown of what I have for lenses in my gear bag. Uh, a lot of people will say, wow, you shoot micro four thirds for everything. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think of it as much as I shoot micro four thirds as much as I shoot Lumix. Um, if Lumix had a full frame camera, uh, I'd be all over it. But I do love micro four thirds uh, in the fact that it does allow me to be more lightweight, more nimble. And you know, even if I had uh, full frame Lumix, uh, I would probably carry a couple of these little cameras as well to capture those second angles. So micro four thirds has a place uh, in my mind for a lot that I do. I also have the 42.5 1.2, and we will have the 42.5 uh, Lumix version as well when we go to this wedding. So let's talk a little bit about um, imagery and, and what this all means in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of gear and, and what it equates to. Of course, we'll carry my laptop for downloading and backing up things uh, because Yes, I love that I have all of this, uh, but more times than not, I'm going to roll out with this bag instead, uh, which will have, it's just my shoulder bag, you know, one, two, three, four, five lenses in it, a couple of camera bodies. Here I have another GH5 in here, which I'll carry. Um, and I'll roll out with this more times than not. Jennifer loves to roll even lighter, uh, so she generally rolls out with uh, this little version of the Peak Design. Uh, she can carry a camera here, one on a strap on her shoulder, three, four lenses inside, and she's good to go. She can pretty much photograph a whole wedding that way. Uh, last but not least, I should mention one more thing. I will have this gimbal with me as well. This is the Zion uh, Gion, <laughs> uh, Crane Plus system, and I've, I've fallen in love with this little gimbal. So this will be cool for some of the shots that I'll capture in video. I've also got some videos pulled up here just to kind of talk about things that I think about. So that's the gear bag. This is what I'm taking with me uh, to this destination celebrity wedding. Let's talk about the, the mental process of preparing for an event on this level. So let me take you into Lightroom here. I went into Lightroom and, and just pulled up a few photographs today. Now, this wedding is, I know, going to be in a very beautiful location. There will be boats involved. Um, as you watch this, I am actually on location at the wedding uh, filming, and I started pre-visualizing some of the things. I'm like, oh, I, I can picture some of the things I know I want to see. Uh, of course, who knows how it's going to go down, but let's talk about some of the lenses here. Um, so this is shot on the, the GX8, um, which is... Uh, the camera that I mentioned before, uh, right here, this little camera here. And I love this system for weddings because it's just so lightweight. I love this little flip up thing because you can actually get down into it and shoot this way or flip it down, you know, however you want to do it. But it's just, it weighs nothing. And so many beautiful photographs come off of this. This is working with the 12 millimeter uh, ISO 100. But I love framing things through doorways. Uh, creatively. So I always look for compositions that allow me to do things of that nature. So just her dress hung up at the beginning of the day. You know, natural light is just so beautiful when it is exactly that, when it is natural. Uh, this is shot on a GH4, so the predecessor camera uh, to the GH5. And uh, again, absolutely love this. Really beautiful, soft, natural, using natural light. Uh, here I am on a boat, uh, a sailboat during this wedding and everybody's uh, giving cheers here and you know this is just such a beautiful moment and again that's shot on the GX8 so uh, small camera that's incredibly capable at weddings and so it's not about carrying the biggest camera you can humanly carry. Uh, it's about having cameras that just work for you that you can be nimble with. You're on the move, you're on your feet all day and so I love it when I can capture moments without having beasts of cameras around my shoulders at all times. The shot you just saw is captured on this little tiny GX85. I mean, it looks like a point and shoot camera, yet it's got interchangeable lenses. I love this for photography and video uh, as a second angle because you got your little flip screen here. Uh, you can get it low if you want. And 
Uh, I just love how small it is, how lightweight. So I'll run with this and it's also got five axis stabilization built in. So you can capture really beautiful smooth video footage and do longer handheld shots with this. So again, having cameras that aren't so overwhelming in size can actually help in a lot of ways. So this shot is done with the latest cameras. Uh, this is a Lumix GH5. No, I'm gonna take you down here to the uh, metadata. I'm at ISO 2500 um, and I am with, I'm at a 50th of a second, F4.3. And I'll tell you what I love about having five axis stabilization uh, is that I can work with longer lenses than ever before. So here I am, this is a 100 to 300 uh, 3556, I believe. Is it an F3556? F4, F4556. So with that said, I love that I can use longer lenses and the five axis stabilization allows me to work in the very back of a ceremony and zoom into the moments as opposed to being obtrusive about things. And so uh, that five axis really coming in handy, working with long lenses like this, uh, and working with lenses that just let me be unobtrusive as I work. Let's move on here. Let's talk a little bit about strobe lighting. So a lot of times I, I'm working in low light situations in a church or something like that and afterwards it'll be time for family portraits or something like that and couples will say, well, let's, uh, can we go back in and do a few shots? And absolutely we can. That's where that white tr translucent umbrella comes in handy that I mentioned earlier. Um, the white translucent is incredibly powerful because it, it, it sends light beautifully if I, and, and I'll shoot with the strobe aimed through it. So the couple would be here, let's say, this would be aimed at a 45 to them, but they get this beautiful central light right on them. And then what happens is all, it filters all the light everywhere else, bounces it a little bit behind and it just fills uh, a church or a ceremony or a dark location with light and allows me to do these really, really beautiful uh, portraits that have a soft glow uh, and that have a lot of ambiance in that dark room. I have a couple more examples of that. And this is, again, just utilizing that soft uh, translucent umbrella, 45 degree to the couple. And I love that I can be mobile in and out so fast. Uh, same thing here, um, low light situation in a bar, uh, but it just gives the perfect amount of light on the subject, allowing them to blend in with what we see in the bar. Uh, here, uh, same thing, translucent white umbrella. I can do bridal party groups with it. It throws light everywhere, adds an elegance to the room because it's bouncing off everything in the room, but really lights our subjects incredibly well. That same bar I was mentioning earlier, this is celebrity party planner David Tutera's wedding, which I photographed this summer. And uh, just some really beautiful, uh, you know, kind of Gatsby kind of lighting uh, in terms of the beauty of it. So let's talk about the next image. Uh, I mentioned having pro photo strobes. Well, and I mentioned also having tall light stands at weddings. Well, I want to get my stands up really high, uh, literally way above everyone's heads. And I want my lights above everyone's heads. And what I'll do in this situation a lot of times, let me just bring out a light is I will have the light one on each side of a ballroom and we're talking some pretty big ballrooms sometimes and I'll have it up on the stand aimed straight out like this a lot of times I'll put it behind the uh, the speakers of the band so really nobody pays attention to it but I don't aim them down to the dance floor I aim them straight out because what I want the light to do is just kind of kiss the dance floor get that soft scrim of light that uh, the, the edge of the light hitting the dance floor and I want the light to bounce off the back wall of the ballroom and, and flood the room this way. And by doing that with two lights in a room, it lets me frame things and work as a photojournalist uh, much more unobtrusively. And let me share a couple of examples with you in that way. The shot you just saw uh, is lit just that way. And so I can frame couples as they walk across the dance floor having a simple moment uh, with a cake uh, or uh, I can capture the ambiance of an entire grand ballroom this way uh, beautifully well uh, and shoot all the details as well. Get down onto the dance floor and start photographing all the little details. And it's just these two flashes that allow me uh, to work the room. And then same thing here during the first dance, 
I, I actually put those two strobes up in the balcony, aim straight out, and this is the result that I'm getting. I'm actually shooting into the lights. You can see the uh, little bit of uh, DJ smoke coming from the corner. But yeah, as a photojournalist, I can shoot wide. Uh, I can shoot, here's their, uh, a little toast they were giving, uh, kind of medium. I can go to the way back of the room. Here I'm framing uh, the cake in the foreground. They're way in the distance, but still have that balance of lighting throughout the room. Uh, and of course, close-ups. And you know, I love that the light's just coming from a direction. And that's incredibly important. You know, here uh, David's walking off the dance floor with his mom. We have just a beautiful glow in the room. Light coming from a direction feels more like a movie than a wedding photograph uh, as you go through their album. Uh, and I love that about it. So all of those on the GH5, which I had just got, this is another example here uh, of working with this little GX85, believe it or not. And so again, firing the same strobes, but a lot of times I like to get below the subject and the strobe up in the corner. And if I block the light where the strobe is with their heads or their bodies, I get this kind of effect where they're on the shadow side of the light but with the dynamic range and the chandelier getting lit, it creates this beautiful romance in the photograph. And so I use lights that way and, and a, a myriad of cameras and different camera sizes because same thing, it allows me to get rim light. Uh, here we're in a tent and uh, of course this is on the GH5, but you know, you can get so many cool angles that way. Uh, let's talk about video because yes, uh, I will be, uh, creating a film from the, from the wedding. Jennifer will be covering the stills. We'll combine it all at the end into some kind of magic. Uh, but what do I think about when I'm packing as a filmmaker? Well, my life's a lot easier than it used to be. Uh, I used to pack cinema cameras, DSLRs, uh, and just be overwhelmed with gear. I would have two more bags if I was working DSLR based and that's why I went mirrorless. I realized that the mirrorless camera just gave me freedom to say, how do I feel like shooting this moment? And so uh, all the technology that's built into these mirrorless cameras for weddings is just insane. So, uh, you know, time lapses are one thing that I think about in my films because I want to capture more than just the people and uh, the details. I want to capture kind of the flow of light and the feeling of things. So. This is a wedding I photographed in Spain not too long ago. And you can see we went out and time lapse this beautiful Frank Gehry building where the wedding would be uh, and captured just the beauty of the, the, the clouds moving across the sky and the uh, 16th century town and the sun going down. And you know, so there's a lot of beauty that I try to capture in my films. And again, I can do all of that with a myriad of these little cameras shooting time lapse or the GH5 and just be unobtrusive and be out in the field and have five, six angles going at once uh, and just makes it a lot of fun. So I love mirrorless because flicker free time lapse is built into these things so beautifully. Uh, let's talk about the gimbal that I mentioned earlier. Um, this is my little crane gimbal and I love this because there's so many cool shots that can be uh, had with this gimbal. Let's go through a couple here. Um, just, you know, here her shoes uh, and her veil spread out on the bed and I'll share a few more angles as we go and talk about them. But look, the gimbal just makes this beautiful smooth footage. This of course is a time lapse, Plaza Hotel, New York. But look how uh, I'm capturing the dress, just kind of walking towards it in a slow motion. Walking down the aisle, I love that we feel the motion of things. And from details to uh, you know, real moments of the couple, having a gimbal just gives this beautiful footage, uh, two wedding stories that just cannot be overstated. You, know, you feel like you're in their first dance uh, when we have shots on a gimbal. And so this is one of the keys to a lot of what we do. And I just love, again, being mirrorless, I've learned lightweight on the move. I can do so much more with smaller systems, more with less. And, and you know, two people photographing and filming a huge celebrity wedding and everybody thinking, wow, completely unobtrusive. Look how, look how in fact, I hear that from, from uh, couples and I land a lot of jobs because of that because I'll he literally hear people say, I love how unobtrusive they are. I can see it and I'll hear them say something over my shoulder. 
Nobody ever says, look at that small camera. They say, I love the way he works. And so that's, you know, I've just learned that that's what matters most, the end result, uh, the unobtrusiveness. Now, I do love shallow depth of field. Uh, and I tell you, there's times when it's choosing the right lens for the moment. Here, just handheld, of course. But that Leica 42.5 1.2 gives me beautiful low light footage, beautiful bokeh in the distance, uh, and incredibly tight depth of field. Look at the, the glow coming through here. You know, the tear, you can see it coming down her face. And I love tight depth of field lenses and working with primes a lot for photos and video because it, when you aren't focused on the background and what's going on behind you, you only see the emotions. And so, you know, a lot of times I just work handheld, love that five axis, love those primes. Low light, focused on emotion, uh, just a beautiful way to capture a wedding story. I think I have one more little thing here to share. Ah, uh, yes, I keep saying five axis. Here's why I will be on a boat for this destination celebrity wedding. And so I'm pre-visualizing some different things I'll be able to do, but you know, working on a boat, especially in this particular case I'm about to share with you, a sailboat, hand-holding an entire ceremony, I, don't, I know for a fact I could have never done it with a heavier, bigger camera. So you'll see me here, Lumix GH5 again, five axis stabilization, and able to hand-hold the entire ceremony and hand-hold, I'm standing as the boat's rocking, we are literally under sail. Uh, capturing here, sailboat going by, capturing their nuptials, handheld the entire time, uh, and there is a sail up. We are moving, uh, and you really don't get that feeling. You don't see a bunch of shakiness and stutteriness in my footage. You just see the beauty of it. And so that's kind of my story. This is what I pack when I go to one of these big weddings. Um, uh, there's a lot here, but then again, if I were based DSLR full frame, I'd have two, two more bags. Keep that in mind. Uh, and so we will be photographing and filming the entire time. We will be capturing vlog footage behind the scenes uh, of us at work. I'm going to try to pull together a few more stories about how we work the event together to share with you guys when we do get back as well. Uh, just so you can see the placement of the lights in the ballroom. You can see uh, how we're working an event. So we'll bring that to you. Um, I hope some of you may have found this helpful. I know I ran long, uh, but I just wanted to share some thoughts, my thought process, what I pack, what I go through, uh, and what we bring to the table when we do these big events. Uh, reach out with any questions that you have about any that I mentioned today. Uh, if you have ideas of how I can help bring information that's helpful to you to the table, mention it in comments. Um, I'm happy to create segments around uh, education and helping others find their way. Uh, with that said, I appreciate you guys uh, here on YouTube uh, and beyond, and we will be coming back to you as soon as we get back from this big event. Have a great one, everybody. Take care. <laughs>